Last time we saw that in extensive form games, subgame perfect equilibrium makes much better predictions than Nash. But unfortunately, subgame perfection only applies in perfect information games because if a game has any actual information sets, we can't just backwards induce the optimal actions. Instead, we need to think about players' beliefs at each information set and how they relate to optimal strategies, which will ultimately lead us to the notion of sequential equilibrium. So to begin with, let's think about what we mean by beliefs and where they come from. As in most of our game theoretic solution concepts, we are looking for a strategy profile, and unlike complete information extensive games, where we know that the subgame perfect equilibrium will use pure strategies, in games with incomplete information, the equilibrium profile may well involve randomization. But when looking for equilibria in sequential games, Rather than thinking about mixed strategy profiles, it often helps to think about profiles of behavioral strategies. Where a mixed strategy randomizes between pure strategies, which in an extensive game means randomizing between complete plans for the game, a behavioral strategy is a plan that uses randomization meaning that we are going to deliberately choose a probability distribution for a player to use at each of their decision points. Now, the distinction between mixed strategies and behavioral strategies is only critical if the players in a game don't have perfect recall, and in the games we'll be considering, we will assume perfect recall, but reasoning in terms of behavioral strategies that specify probabilities separately at each information set will still give us a much easier time. But then, if a game involves randomness, either because the players are mixing between their actions, or because there is randomness in the environment that we model as nature moves, and if the game has information sets where a player can't tell exactly which node of the game tree they're currently at, then the players need to reason about how likely are each of the possible states within an information set. And we model that reasoning as a belief where a player's belief specifies for each of their information sets the probability that they think each of the nodes will occur in the event that the game arrives at that information set. And while in principle a belief could specify any probability distribution over an information set, we are particularly interested in beliefs that actually make sense based on the randomness in the game. And so we say that a belief is consistent with a strategy profile if those beliefs are derived correctly from the randomization that the players and or the game is doing. So for example, if at the first node of this game, player 1 plays the left action with probability 0.4 and the middle action with probability 0.6, then the consistent belief for player 2 at their information set A would be that there's a 0.4 chance they are in this node and a 0.6 chance they are in this node. In addition, consistent beliefs have to update probabilities using Bayes' rule, meaning that if there were some probability on other actions, they would have to renormalize to their information. So for example, if the probability distribution were 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.1, and then player two finds themselves at this information set, they will renormalize based on the information that this possibility didn't happen, and so they would believe a 4 ninths, 5 ninths distribution over the nodes. Likewise, if a player has uncertainty from earlier in the game tree, they will have to continue to update their probabilities as the game progresses. But the idea of a consistent belief distribution says we have to correctly update probabilities whenever possible, and there can be cases where there's no way to come up with valid beliefs. For example, if player 1 is playing this 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 randomization at their first node, then 
for this information set, there is no way for player one to form consistent beliefs. Under the strategies the players are using, this information set occurs with probability zero. And so player one could make up whatever beliefs they want for this information set and still be consistent with the strategies that are being played. And in addition to deriving beliefs from the player's strategies, we can also derive best response strategies from the beliefs. If we have a player's beliefs that specify for each of their information sets a probability of each state they could be in, we could then, starting from the bottom of the tree, compute at each of their information sets an expected utility. If we have a probability distribution over the states we could be in, then we can calculate an expected utility for a given action by summing up over the outcomes that could result, the utility of that outcome times the probability of the state that leads to that outcome. And since we can calculate expected utilities at each information set, we could also compute best responses at each information set. And a behavioral strategy is a best response to a profile and a belief distribution if it is playing an action or a mixture that gives maximal expected utility at every one of the information sets. And then we can look for profiles where everyone is best responding. In particular, a perfect Bayesian equilibrium is a profile of behavioral strategies and a belief for each of the players where the beliefs are consistent with the profile and every player's strategy is a best response to the profile and to their beliefs. But because of the weirdness of consistent probabilities being undefined in unreached parts of the game tree, we can also think about whether there's a better way to come up with beliefs in those regions. And that leads us to the further refinement of sequential equilibrium, which is analogous to trembling hand perfect equilibria in normal form games, where we thought about fully mixed profiles that put a small probability on all of the possible actions, here, a fully mixed behavioral strategy is one that puts at least a little bit of probability on every action at every decision point. And if there is some non-zero probability on every action, then it will be possible to compute beliefs that make sense at every information set in the tree. And so if we used fully mixed profiles, then computing consistent beliefs would pin down the probabilities everywhere in the game tree, but it might not actually be optimal for the players to use fully mixed strategies. And so, like with trembling hand equilibria, we don't require that the equilibrium profile be fully mixed, but rather we require that it be the limit of a sequence of fully mixed profiles, where the equilibrium profile is a best response to everything in that sequence. So to make more sense of these equilibrium concepts and to get some practice with computing beliefs and best responses, let's take a look at an example. In this game, player one has four information sets, which I've labeled A, B, C, and D. At those decision points, player one can pick between three, two, two, and two actions. So a behavioral strategy for player one has to specify nine probabilities. The probability for each of the three actions at this node and for each of the two actions at the other information sets. And so an example of a behavioral strategy for player one is this, where they put these probabilities on their actions at node A, these probabilities on their actions at information set B, and so on. Likewise, player two has two information sets, A and B, that each have two available actions, and so their behavioral strategy has to specify four probabilities, 
one distribution over their actions at A and another distribution over their actions at B. And then, using those current strategies, we can calculate beliefs for both players at their information sets. Beginning with player 2's information set A, we know that if player 1 is playing 0.4, 0 0.60 at their first node, the distribution over this information set has to be 0 0.4, 0 0.6. Then, looking at player 1's information sets, if they find themselves at information set B, then they know that they in the past played this left action, and so even though player 2 was confused about which node they were at, player 1 knows that we went down this branch, and so they can use player 2's strategy to derive their probabilities, and since player 2 is playing a 0.8, 0.2 mixture at information set A, that results in a 0 0.8, 0 0.2 probability distribution over the nodes in information set B. And since player 2 has to play the same probability distribution at both of these nodes because they're in the same information set, we'll also get the same distribution over these two states for player 1 in information set C. When we get to information set D, if we try to calculate the probability that it will occur under the current strategy profile, there is no valid probability distribution here because we come down this branch of the game tree with probability 0. And so if we want to think in terms of perfect Bayesian equilibria, where all we require of the beliefs is that they be consistent with the profile, then we could specify whatever probability distribution we want over these states and have the players best respond to it. But if instead we're thinking in terms of sequential equilibrium, then we have to hypothesize how did we end up in this zero probability branch of the game tree. And since we're thinking about a vanishingly small probability of a tremble, we can suppose that player 1 accidentally played the right-hand action, and then thereafter the players used their behavioral strategies and will update probabilities accordingly. So if we somehow got to information set B, well since that only has one node, we know that there's a 100% probability we were here, and then, when player 2 uses their behavioral strategy, that will give us a 0 0.3, 0 0.7 probability distribution over these nodes. And so, the only probability distribution we'd be allowed to use in a sequential equilibrium here is 0 0.3, 0 0.7. And now that we've figured out beliefs that are consistent with the player's strategies, and that also make as much sense as possible even in the unplayed regions of the game tree, we could now, for each player, calculate their best response to their beliefs. And like with backwards induction, we can calculate those best responses starting from the bottom of the game tree. For player 1 in information set B, they believe that there is an 80-20 distribution over the two possible states, and so they can use that 80-20 distribution to calculate the expected utility if they play left and the expected utility if they play right. If they play left from this information set, then there is a 0.8 chance they'll get 1 and a 0.2 chance they'll get 3. Whereas if they play right, then there is a 0.8 chance they will get 0 and a 0.2 chance they will get 0. And based on those expected utilities, player 1's best response at this information set is to play left. At information set C, there is again an 80-20 distribution, and so the expected utility of left is 0.8 times 2 plus 0.2 times 1, while the expected utility of right is 0.8 times 3 plus 0.2 times 0. And so in this case, player 1's best response is to play right. Likewise, at information set D, where their beliefs specify a 0 0.3, 0 0.7 distribution, we can calculate their expected utility. 
and we find that the action left is their best response. Then, as we move up the tree, we could calculate player 1's best response at this node using the actions that we just found for the information sets later in the game. Since the profile that player 1 is best responding to involves player 2 randomizing 80-20 when they're at this information set and 30-70 at this information set, we can use those probabilities to calculate the expected utility if player 1 plays these various actions. When they play the left action, player 2's strategy says that there will be an 80% chance of going down this path, where player 1 will eventually get 1, and a 20% chance of going down this path, where player 1 will eventually get 3. If they play the center action, then, player 2's strategy will 80% of the time result in player 1 getting 3, and 20% of the time result in player 1 getting 0. And if player 1 plays the right-hand action, then player 2's distribution will send them here 30% of the time, and here 70% of the time. And comparing these expected utilities, player 1's best response at this node is the right action. And if we write out those best responses as a behavioral strategy, we get this probability distribution, which is clearly different from player 1's strategy in the profile. So we know that player 1 was not best responding, and this profile is not an equilibrium. But because it's slightly more interesting, let's also go through a similar calculation for player 2's best responses at each of their nodes. For player 2's information set A, they believe that there's a 0.4 chance of being in this state and a 0.6 chance of being in this one. And so those probabilities will factor into their expected utility for both of their actions. But then, we also need to think about when player 2 chooses, say, the left action, what is the expected utility using player 1's strategy on the remaining information sets? Since player 1's strategy says that at this information set they will play a 0 0.1, 0 0.9 distribution over their actions, there will be a 0.1 or 0.9 chance of getting, respectively, 4 or 2 in the case that they were here. Or if they happen to have been at this node, then when they play left, they'll get a 0 chance of this outcome and a probability 1 of this outcome. Likewise, if they play right and happen to have been here, then there's a 0.1 chance they get 2 and a 0.9 chance they get 3. Whereas, if they happen to have been here, they'll get 1 with probability 0 and 4 with probability 1. And when we add up these expected utilities, we find that player 2's best response is to play right. At information set B, player 2's calculations are simpler. If they play left, then they get a 50-50 chance of 1 or 1. Whereas, if they play right, they get a 50-50 chance of 4 or 2. So the best response at this information set is clearly to play right, and overall the behavioral strategy that is player 2's best response is 0, 1, 0, 1. So again, we see that player 2's original strategy was not a best response to the beliefs that we derived based on player 1's strategy. So now that we know how to derive beliefs from behavioral strategies, and how to compute expected utilities and best responses from those beliefs, we can check whether a given profile and some corresponding beliefs are a Bayesian perfect or sequential equilibrium. But as is so often the case, the problem of actually finding the equilibrium is harder than the problem of checking it, and so that will be our subject for next time.